So if you've been keeping up with our videos here, you've probably seen me explain how the Apple and Google contact tracing app works. But I want to dive a little bit more into the specifics and how contact tracing app rollouts are actually going, so stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to Today in Tech. I'm Julia Beauchamp. I am here with Computer World Senior Writer, Charlotte Truman. She's calling in all the way from the UK and she is going to give us some really valuable insights about how the UK app rollout has gone. So Charlotte, thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for having me, Julia. So the UK is sort of in a pretty interesting position and I'm not sure, maybe you know, how many countries are like it in that when Google and Apple had these plans to roll out their own contact tracing app and then, you know, license that, the um, API to health organizations around the world. It seemed like the UK kind of said, we're going to do it our own way and we're going to create an app on our own. Um, so yeah, back in kind of late March, um, the, time, the UK government made the decision that they were going to, um, take a centralized approach to developing their contract contact tracing app, um, as opposed to the decentralized approach that um, Apple and Google were touting. Um, so basically the difference between that is, um, whereas the Apple and Google model, all the information would be stored on people's devices, um, with the centralized model, um, all the information that the app con um, collects would be stored in a centralized database. So, why did the UK originally go this route? It was now, and can you also tell me a little bit about the app? It's maybe something that's um, perhaps unfamiliar to our US viewers that obviously in the UK, you have sort of a centralized health agency in the NHS. So you, can you tell me a little bit about, you know, how the NHS went about creating that app or how the UK government went about creating that app with the NHS? Yeah, of course. So, um, so originally, um, actually, um, the first app that came about, so there was a kind of contact tracing app in the UK, and that was developed by um, a professor at a university here um, with King's College, um, London University. Um, and they kind of, they had the technology already for um, a different project. And then when coronavirus came about, they decided to pivot that technology and start kind of just collecting, pe people could download the app, log in, and then they could just kind of um, input their symptoms and then it would give sort of an idea of where clusters of coronavirus cases were. Um, but obviously that was kind of uh, a private app. They were working with the NHS, but it was an, an NHS endorsed app. Um, so then the government came along and said that as we've, as we've discussed or as you've discussed previously, that an app is kind of central to the contact tracing system. So obviously as well as collecting um, calling people up if they have test positive coronavirus, you obviously don't know who you've been next to, say on public transport or in a shop. Um, and the best way to do that is via an app on your phone. Um, so then the NHS said they were going to kind of launch their own one um, because the NHS has um, this kind of subsidy called NHS X, which develops all the kind of technology and does the digital work for the NHS. And long story short, it seems like that original app didn't exactly work out. So I want to talk about sort of the specifics and the details of why the UK government and NHS approach didn't work. Yeah, so kind of give a bit of a timeline. They announced that they were going to start developing this app kind of late March, early April, um, and then around kind of mid-April-ish or so, there was reports started to come out in the press that um, they kind of, the UK government was sort of at a standoff with Apple and Google because they decided to kind of take this alternative approach to how they were going to develop the app. And back then, mid-April, this is, um, Apple and Google said, you can, you can do that, but we're not going to kind of support that te technology. We're not going to support that in our app stores. And it kind of goes against our privacy regulations. Um, the UK government said, we don't think that's the case. Um, we think our app is still going to work and decided to forge ahead with um, their idea. 
Um, they did develop an app, um, it did exist, and then they decided um, to trial it, as you kind of need to, and they um, launched it on a place called the Isle of Wight, which is a little island off the south of the UK. It sits kind of not, well, not in the English Channel, but it sits just kind of, yeah, south of, um, of England. Um, and the population on the Isle of Wight is about 142,000 people. Um, so they um, were trialing the app, I think, for about a month. And basically, during that time, it was found there were issues with um, the app, like, so the phone's actually connecting. So the technology um, that the UK government was using, um, it only, um, when it came to um, iPhones, one of the issues was although the technology was running in the background unless the app was kind of open on your phone and you were using the app or your screen was um kind of in use then and the person you were next to was all their screen was also in use or the app was also in use the phones wouldn't connect so if i had my iphone like just kind of asleep in my bag and i walked past someone whose iphone was kind of in the same mode our phones wouldn't connect. And I think in the end, it was only 4% um, of iPhones or iPhones using this app actually connected. So did the original UK app that launched on the um, Isle of Wight, did it sort of work similarly or did it have some of the similar ideas as the Apple Google app? Because as we know, and as I've covered here on the channel, and for any of our viewers who are out of the loop or want to know a little bit more about the specifics, I'll link both of our videos about the Apple and Google contact tracing app below. But the way that that app worked, the Google and Apple app, that is, is that the two phones, and the reason that Apple and Google obviously work together is that those are the two major operating systems, um, is if that, you know, I have an iPhone and I'm in the grocery store and I'm within six-ish feet of someone else, our phones can be talking each other to each other via Bluetooth things. Is that how the UK original app was supposed to work? Yeah, yes, that's how it, that's how it was meant to work. Um, but because of uh, the technology they decided to use, that wasn't the case. Like I say, if your iPhone was asleep or wasn't in use, then it wouldn't register another phone. Um, they had the same problems with Android, but not as, um, High failure, has a high percentage of failure rate as they did with iPhones. So by now, it seems as though the UK has pretty much scrapped these plans, right? And that the government is now going to be going with the Apple Google model all along? Yeah, so as well as kind of the failure of um, the phones connecting. There was also quite a few questions around security and privacy as well. Obviously, um, by using the centralized model that they wanted to, there were then kind of questions about the security of the data and how it was going to be stored. Um, and then also um, it came out that if your data was going to be kept for about 10 years, I think it was in the end by the NHS and um, whoever your phone connected with, their data could be kept for five years. So obviously people weren't too happy about that. Um, so what transpired after all of this, after our health ministers, after our Secretary of State, um, Matt Hancock kept saying the app was coming, the app was coming, um, the deadline kept getting pushed back and getting more vague. Eventually they had to admit that um, actually the app didn't work and they were gonna have to adopt this um, Apple Google model um, initially, um, at a press conference, Matt Hancock um, said that they were doing like a hybrid model between the UK technology and Apple technology. Um, Apple then came, came out and said, no one told us about that. We don't know where apps come from. Um, and there were also some other questions as well. Um, the UK claimed that the Apple um, version or the Apple Google version of the app also had trouble calculating distance. So it wouldn't know the difference between phones that were say one meter apart and three meters apart. And obviously if you're three meters apart, that's not a problem. You don't need to, your phones don't need to ping. Whereas if you've been within one meter of someone that was breaking um, kind of social distancing guidelines at the time. So that would be an issue. Again, Apple have said, that's not something, an issue that other countries have raised with us. So, um, 
yeah, there's now some questions around what is the next step, I guess. I'd like to also look at and maybe point to some countries that have had a somewhat successful rollout of an app. I think so often it seems as though the case with these rollouts is pretty much, you know, you're only going to be as successful as the percentage of the people that actually download the app. And that can be a real issue when people have privacy concerns or people just have, you know, general mistrust of tech companies. So can you point um, our audience to some semi-successful uh, adoptions of a contact tracing app? Because here in the U.S., while some contact tracing apps um, have been licensed to state public health departments, it's, we haven't really seen anything you know, widespread yet. Yeah, so this is a, not, a, not a tricky question, but um, I guess kind of the definition of successful can kind of differ depending on who you're talking to. Um, so when all this kind of debacle was going on, um, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson actually came out and said, as defending his government, said that actually no country in the world had developed a successful contact tracing app. Um, people kind of disagreed with him to a certain extent. Um, the kind of, the, the big one that I guess people look to initially um, was South Korea. They seem to have a very successful app. I read somewhere that um, apparently it was so successful at um, tracking citizens that actually found out that people were having affairs because it tracked people so well you could see when they were not where they should be. Um, other countries in Europe, I know Germany have rolled out a contact tracing app. Um, I think that's still quite early days. So again, it all kind of depends on download rates, like you said, um, for it to be successful, just because the technology works, if no one downloads it, it's not gonna function how it needs to be. I think Australia and Singapore had that problem. They rolled out apps quite early on, but the download rates amongst the populations were just so low that they didn't end up being of any use. Um, so while there are some countries that have functioning technology and functioning apps, um, whether they are successful or not in actually tracing people and kind of lowering cases of coronavirus is, I think, still yet to be seen. Great. Well, in that case, I guess we'll just have to have you back once the UK <laughs> has hopefully a meaningful rollout of the app or perhaps rather a meaningful rollout of the app. I really appreciate your insight, Charlotte. I think it's really interesting, like I already mentioned, you know, I've covered the specifics and the basics of how the app works, but looking to an actual rollout, I think, is really helpful to understanding just how technology may contribute to containing the spread of the coronavirus. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you all so much for watching this episode of Today in Tech. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel the notification icon in the corner so you can be alerted every single time we post a new video. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have any questions about how the Apple and Google app works, we have two videos that I will link below in the description for you to check out. Let me know in the comments if you would be willing to download this app. If you're in the UK and you actually use the original UK app, I'd love to hear your perspective as well. Thank you all so much again for watching and I'll see you next time.